Hello, friends. You might have seen my video a couple months ago where I attempted to answer the question, where is the upper limit of gaming with the single most powerful gaming GPU on the market right now by running a single GTX 1080 Ti at 4K, 5K, and 8K at ultra settings. I did that using NVIDIA's Dynamic Super Resolution, or DSR, to run games at those high resolutions and downscale to 4K, since we don't have 5 or 8K monitors in the studio. But MSI was kind enough to send us two Twin Frozer 6 GTX 1080 Ti's, so I had to up the ante. We've got three 4K monitors, so we'll be testing 1080 Ti's and SLI at 4K, 5K, 8K, and triple 4K setups. So I guess it's time for episode two, I guess, of pushing current gen gaming to the limit. Push it to the limit. Let's begin. Working across multiple computers is a messy process. It's way too easy to click and type on the wrong system, which can cause unnecessary stress and frustration. But we found a solution. Synergy. Synergy is a software application that lets you control multiple devices with just one mouse and keyboard. You can drag and drop files, share your clipboard, and more across Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Find out more and get 50% off using the link in the description. Now in case you're not completely up to speed on the state of SLI at the moment, here's a quick refresher. When Nvidia launched the GTX 10 series, they made the controversial decision to limit SLI to two GPUs as the only officially supported configuration for gaming. But immediately after that, they claimed there would be an enthusiast key that would unlock three and four way SLI configurations for people running specialized programs like overclocking software and professional applications. But shortly after that, they walked back that promise. So here we are, Two-way SLI is NVIDIA's only officially supported configuration for multi-GPU gaming, which is, honestly, probably just fine, because these days not many developers are building in native support for multi-GPU setups. That said, there are ways you can run two, three, and four GPUs using alternate methods, like DirectX 12's multi-display adapter feature, but I'm not going to get into all that because that's not what we're here for. We are here to see what kind of performance we can get from these two GTX 1080 Ti's. The system we're using is the same one I used in the original 1080 Ti video with a Core i7-7700K and 32GB of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4. The two MSI GTX 1080 Ti's are connected with a high bandwidth SLI bridge, so we'll get the highest performance possible. An LED SLI bridge would support playing at 4K, but in order to hit higher resolutions, we need the HB bridge. And we're using the same 4K monitors that we used in another triple 4K video back in May 2015, Samsung U28D590Ds. All of these benchmarks were run at ultra settings with V-Sync and anti-aliasing off. I was able to test Battlefield 1, GTA 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Witcher 3 at all of my chosen resolutions, while Doom in OpenGL and Vulkan, as well as Overwatch did not play nice with NVIDIA Surround. And Overwatch does not officially support multi-monitor configurations, and Doom had support but Bethesda actually patched it out. That's what it looked like from my research anyways. Leave a comment if you think I'm an idiot, and I totally could have gotten it working if I wasn't such an idiot. Now to the benchmarks. In my original 1080 Ti video, I concluded that it looks like 5K and 8K gaming wasn't quite here yet, but I've gotta say, some of these numbers are arguably playable, especially if you're willing to play at high or medium settings instead of ultra. With our SLI setup, in a lot of these games, we're seeing double the average FPS of a single 1080 Ti, or even higher, and that could be because I used MSI's custom 1080 Ti's instead of the reference model, or because of better optimized drivers, but even factoring in those things, it appears that we're seeing SLI scaling around 90%, which is pretty awesome. Overwatch in particular got over two times as much performance in SLI as I did with a single 1080 Ti, so I'm guessing there must have been a very nice driver update. We did not see a large increase in Doom in OpenGL, and Doom in Vulkan apparently doesn't support SLI. And just like last time, 8K didn't even work using Vulkan either. With the exception of Battlefield 1, we also saw an increase in FPS going from 8K to triple 4K, because of course the total number of pixels in 8K is 26,265 
8,600 compared to 24,883,200 in triple 4K. We also got an 80% increase in FPS in Unigen Heaven, but that was only at 4K since that synthetic benchmark doesn't support DSR. So to answer the central question of this video, SLI can be very good, depending on the game. We saw in Overwatch, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Battlefield 1 some very good scaling, but not as good in Doom. 4K was made even better with dual 1080 Ti's, and 5K was impressively playable in quite a few titles. At 8K, I'd say Overwatch, GTA 5, and even Battlefield 1 might be doable if you turn down the settings. And in triple 4K, Tomb Raider and GTA 5 would be alright, the others not so much, and Doom and Overwatch don't actually support it. So. So what does this mean for the gaming landscape? Well, it seems like years of experimenting with multiple GPUs and multi-monitor setups have kind of led the market towards the place we find ourselves now, which is, it doesn't seem like those things are really worth the time and money to set up. 4K and ultra-wide monitors provide excellent gaming experiences, and if you can get a single powerful GPU to run those, you'll probably be better off than trying to double up graphics cards or extra monitors. It was great to see that two of one of the highest performing GPUs on the market could power some experiences at 5K, 8K, and triple 4K, but would I recommend anyone else try to get this kind of setup? Not unless you just hate having money and need to get rid of it somehow. And even then, I'd probably say, use it for something more worthwhile. Like, you know, charity or something. Now that said, if you are interested in buying GPUs, monitors, or anything else a PC type person would need, you can click the link in the corner to head to ncix.com. But that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Click over here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. And if you see in a second, I've been pausing periodically to restart this benchmark. Behind the scenes.